Welcome to this practicum. Uh, we are going to be going over the Wheatstone Bridge today. Uh, we've gone over current dividers and voltage dividers in the past, but in this conceptual lesson that we just most recently did, uh, we did that plus the Wheatstone Bridge. So we thought with this practicum, we'd do the Wheatstone Bridge itself and show you how that works in real life. First off, I just want to thank Digilent for their support in doing this and partnering with us to do this. It's been a wonderful help. And we are using their Discovery 3 here to both provide the power and also to do some of the measurements today. So with that, just in case you don't remember, if you don't know what I'm talking about with the Wheatstone Bridge at all, please go look at the conceptual lesson, either the written lesson or the video lesson, so that you have a better idea. But in case you just need some sort of a jog of your memory, uh, the Wheatstone Bridge is basically when you have four resistors in this kind of diamond shape, and you can use it to balance things. So typically you have three known resistors and one unknown resistor. And then if everything is in ratio, if resistors on one side are at the same ratio as the resistors on the other side, then the voltage between the centers of those two resistors is the same. And you can use that for a couple of different things, uh, which again, you want to go talk about in the conceptual lesson. So I have created this circuit right here, and we're going to talk about it and see how this does not look like what you're going to see on a schematic diagram because it's a lot messier, but show how it looks like in real life and then actually do a test where we try and get that balance and find that ratio. So with that, let's look at the circuit closer so you can see exactly what it looks like and see what we're going to be measuring when we're doing the experiment itself. Okay, so I'm going to use this handy dandy little screwdriver that came in the student pack that I got from Digilent as I was doing this to point things out because my fat fingers are, well, too fat. But you can see right here that we have three resistors and these two are in series. And then we have this resistor that's in series with this potentiometer or it's a trimmer uh, that we also got from the student pack. And then we have um, connected up here, that is our power from the Digilent uh, Discovery 3. And then we have our ground here. And then we have our measuring devices right here. So basically, I put this as our negative input to our voltmeter, and this is our positive input to our voltmeter. It doesn't really matter which direction you go in that case, but I just did it arbitrarily where this one is the negative and this is the positive. And again, this doesn't have the nice pretty diamond shape that you'd see with a schematic, but you can see basically what's going on here that these two resistors are connected at the same node. And then the bottom of these two resistors, this resistor and this trimmer are connected to ground together. And then we have a measurement between the two nodes there. So that's what it looks like. And now we can turn on our waveforms in the software and actually start adjusting this so that we can see when that trimmer gives us the right ratio. Okay, so with this, you assume that you know three out of the four resistors. Um, I've measured it, I actually know what well, all three of them are, and then the trimmer is going to change depending on what I have it. But let's just look at R1 and R2, and I wrote this these values down. R1 is 6.77K, and then R2 is 67.1K. So we're looking about a 1 to, 1 to 10 ratio. In reality, it's like 0.101 ratio. So with this resistor and the trimmer, they need to be at that same approximately 0.101 uh, ratio or 1 to 10 ratio for us to have zero voltage between those two points. I know that this resistor is 0.996K, and so for the trimmer to be about the same ratio, it'll need to be about 10 ohms. But let's see what this looks like and see what happens. And honestly, once I do this, I'm gonna swap some resistors around and we're gonna do it again to show how the voltages can change. So let me pull up waveforms. So I've opened up waveforms and I am using it again as a power supply and also as a voltmeter. So with the power supply, I'm only using the positive supply. So I turn off the negative supply right here and I set the two volts uh, somewhat arbitrarily. The larger the voltage, the less precision you need uh, to be able to measure. So if something's off by you know 10 millivolts at one, vo uh, one volt, then it would be off by 20 millivolts at two volts, like that sort of thing. So that's where it's just nice to enhance those differences, but you also don't want to go so big that you end up actually burning out your trimmer. I mean, these are quarter watt resistors, but those trimmers are usually a tenth of a watt at most. So that's just the balance uh, that I'm using here is I don't want to go too high, but that's why I chose two volts. And let's turn that on right now. And then the voltmeter, again, I'm only measuring between the two series resistors, so I only need one channel. So I'll set it at updating about every half a second. Again, it can go faster, but that actually makes it, I felt like this is a good uh, speed in which 
I can see the variations without uh, it being so fast that I can't tell what's fluctuating and what's not. So right now I'm seeing a, a difference of about 147 millivolts roughly, which means that my two ratios are out of whack. And so as I increase the resistance of this trimmer that I'm using as a variable resistor, so as I increase the resistance that that variable resistor is showing, they come closer and closer and my voltage drops. So now I'm at 12 millivolts, which means that it's pretty close. But this actually is a good indication of where you're going to have some challenges with the Wheatstone bridge because, okay, what is the ratio? Right now, this trimmer only goes from zero to 10K. All right, so if I have a one to 10 ratio, that means that that 10K can only go up to 10, can only go up to 10K. So it can't do uh, ratios outside of those bounds. So that's one thing that you need to worry about. Second, as mentioned earlier, you need to worry about the power dissipation in these. So that's a very real concern that you have with these. You need to make sure that you're not putting too much power through your resistors or your trimmer. That's gonna cause problems. Uh, third, there's gonna be some variability in the resistors themselves. These are not high precision resistors. So the resistors can, one, they cannot be what the nominal value is. So the measured values I gave you were the truly measured ones. But if you have a 47.7K resistor that's actually more like 48, 49, that's gonna throw things off. And finally, resistors and everything, they change with temperature, so it might not be as consistent as your temperature changes. So with that, I actually am gonna switch the two resistors, R1 and R3, and then we'll do it again, and I'll actually show a, a different way of which you can see that, and that won't take just a second. So I just swapped some resistors around, and if we look at waveforms, we're now at negative 700 millivolts. Remember that voltage is all relative, so all that means is that I arbitrarily said, hey, this is gonna be the ground, this is gonna be positive. Well, now it's opposite, where the positive is actually at a lower voltage than the ground. And frankly, now I can go and do the same thing I did before and try and bring these closer together. So, oh, oh, look at that. Now we're positive again. But if I slowly, oh, no, again, I'm really struggling with the precision here. You can tell, like even with the most gentle things I'm doing, I can't really get below. Ooh, oh, I got down to negative seven millivolts. Uh, but then I just jumped up to 20 millivolts. All right, you guys don't need to see me struggle with this, but you can see the challenge of just trying to barely move this thing to get that to be as even, oh, oh, 600 millivolts, microvolts. I got down to 600 microvolts. I'm calling that good. So you can see that there does need to be some fine tuning there. And that's one of the problems with the precision here. Now, if you set this up properly, you have the proper tools, things like that. This is actually an excellent way to find out uh, like very precisely what a resistor is. This, my current setup, not so great, but properly set up, this concept applies very well. And again, this is also just really good if you have like a strain gauge, one of those things where as you bend it, the resistance changes. It's fantastic in this setup with like an op amp so that you're not putting a load on there. So you can take this high output impedance and change it to a low output impedance um, and even amplify it if necessary, stuff like that. So it doesn't affect your circuit. Uh, and then have that go to the ADC on a microcontroller. That's where you could use this exact circuit in a real application. And now hopefully you have a better idea of some of the challenges involved with it, some of the real life problems. And um, hopefully this has been helpful. Speaking of helpful, we wanna thank Digilent again for their help in this and providing the support and also uh, letting us talk to their engineers about developing this content. We really do appreciate it. If you found this helpful, give us a like, subscribe to the channel, and we will catch you in the next one. Take care. Hey, I hope this tutorial was helpful. Did you know that circuitbread.com also has more useful engineering content? In addition to the tutorials, textbooks, tools, and other things, we have dozens of EE FAQs that explain quick, standalone concepts that are helpful for electrical engineers. Go check them out.